Welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell. Today, we're serving up part three, our final part of our series on your career growth limitations. If you haven't listened to the other episodes, go back to number 62 and listen in order so that you get maximum understanding and value out of this series. Last week, we closed with talking about value addition, adding value to your job and adding value to your company. If we pursue that too strongly, we could become overwhelmed. We're going to start today's episode with knowing when to say when, knowing your limitations. Join me. Let's jump right in to our final part of our series, Your Career Growth Limitations. We need to know when to say when. We need to know what our limitations are. Otherwise, we could be caught with taking on too much, becoming overloaded, and actually becoming counterproductive. It might feel great that your workday is full and you've got plenty on your plate, but there's likely a chance that you're going to become overwhelmed, overloaded, and eventually start missing deadlines and due dates if you haven't already, and those aren't good signs. It's great that you're busy, yes, and it's great that you have work, that you're being productive, but you can also be busy and start to get confused and get frustrated, and when you move into the emotional zone, you're a lot less productive and a lot less effective at your role. So know when to raise your hand because you need to know what your limitations are. Know when to ask for help. When you do ask for help, speak to a coworker, a peer, a manager. Try to do it in the least emotional state possible. It's probably the opposite of when you'd like to go and ask for help because you kind of maybe slam your hand down on your desk. I've had enough. This is too much. I've got 300 emails in my inbox. Everybody wants everything now. It's a lot easier to work off of that trigger and go have that conversation at that time. But that's where your emotional intelligence comes in. That's where your career growth comes in. And you recognize that situation. Maybe take an extra deep, long breath. Take a pause. Go get a drink. Take a break if you're allowed to, you know, take a walk or go outside for some fresh air. Once you cleared your thoughts and collected them, then go ahead back and have that conversation. Also, speaking about knowing when to say when and raising your hand for help, here's something else I'll share with you. It's okay to say, I don't know. There's going to be times in your life, personally and professionally, that you're simply not going to know the answer. It could be on a one-on-one -on -one conversation where someone asks something of you, and the truthful answer is, I just don't know. Now, if it's in an email where you have more time to kind of gather your thoughts and respond, it's also okay to say, I don't know, or something similar, I'm not familiar with that, or I've not run into that situation before. The one thing I'll caution you, though, selectively use I don't know type statements. For example, in interviews, whether you're looking for your first job or you're earning a promotion or excuse me, you're attempting to earn a promotion and you're in an interviewing sequence, saying I don't know is all right. It actually is a strength rather than a weakness because rather than try to fabricate some type of response which may cause you to ramble on and actually potentially use filler words and show that you don't know what you're talking about because there could be subject matter experts in the room that are questioning you. It's a lot better to simply state the facts. I don't know. I'm not familiar with, or I've not experienced that problem before. One thing you can do, by the way, besides, I don't know, I want to make sure I understand your question correctly. Could you rephrase it differently? Now, if you find yourself saying, or rather intending to say, I don't know frequently, that could be a sign that you're not, you're not in the right role at your company or that you don't have the proper training or education to answer those questions and solve those problems. Again, going back to a peer, a manager, or seeking a mentor or coach could help, especially if they're within your company doing a similar or same role, because you could see, hey, you know what? 
how would you handle this situation that I came across the other day? Now, if it's in confidence and it's a private coaching session, you could tell the person, look, the other day I ran into a situation and I found myself wanting to say, I don't know, or that I don't know how to handle this problem. I'd like to ask you to read over this information and tell me how you'd approach it, how you would respond. If by listening to them, you get a better understanding of what the response should have been or how you could have better responded, then you're on the right path. But if their response is so far out of left field that you don't feel that you have the capabilities or the skill set to respond to that, that's where additional coaching, additional training, or that hard discussion with your manager or supervisor needs to happen because it's a lot better, in my opinion, that you recognize it and come to them versus waiting for some type of uh, interview, not interview, but some type of performance review period or some type of annual feedback process where you get a bunch of negative ratings and poor performance marks. It's a lot better that you self-recognize and seek course correction. Now, one last thing to talk about. It's the concept and awareness of time. So the concept of time to be used for scheduling meetings, scheduling discussions, and allowing yourself to chunk out parts of your day so that you can work on, let's say, email during one portion of the day, work on uh, phone calls, work on your core content for another part of your day, your core actions, your core projects. Time allows us to schedule things. All too often, we abuse time. It continues to run whether we like it or not, and all too often, the day is over, and we may find ourselves frustrated or overwhelmed. It's the old phrase, pulling your hair out, that you just have too much to do and too little time. The problem, though, may be that we're not aware of how we use our time. We may not be doing it effectively. I mentioned earlier that there was productivity and there was busyness. They're not the same. Productivity obviously comes from the word produce, and it's to generate. Busy simply means that you're performing activities or applying effort, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be productive or produce anything. For example, yes, email is a natural evil. We have to put up with it in our daily lives. At least most of us do. But what do you actually gain by sitting in front of your computer and going through your emails and categorizing them and maybe responding to a few throughout your workday? Now, if that's your primary work function, you're required to do it, that's what you signed up for, not a problem. For example, it could be customer service and your main communication is email where you're addressing problems, making decisions, uh, deciphering information in the customer's complaints or questions and helping them solve situations. You're truly adding value. That is your goal. That is your, your focus. But if your job has other tasks, other projects that are involved besides working at the computer, specifically focusing on email, what is not getting done if you choose to focus on administrative tasks like sorting, organizing, and keeping your inbox clean? I do highly recommend having an organized inbox, but the question is, what value is it providing if you're not getting to your other tasks, your other assignments? So with that said, when you schedule meetings, as I mentioned earlier, have a timed agenda, have a schedule. People typically will come to meetings and be more productive if they know there's an agenda, if there's a plan in place. If it's timed, even the better, because they likely know that if you're good at hosting meetings and in control, the meeting will start on time and will either end on time or potentially early. Then it comes down to your time. You need to focus on time for yourself as well. Besides your productive work activities, you need to spend some time on you. I've mentored and coached people for many years, and something that continues to happen to many of my students is that they will set time aside for their personal growth after we've done some mentoring or coaching sessions, and I look forward to meeting with them on their next appointment. It could be weekly or monthly. I'll unfortunately get a response. I'm sorry, Craig, we have to push our follow-up meeting. 
I'm sorry, Craig. I got busy and needed to. Craig, can we push out our meeting because we ran into? Yes, that does happen. Interruptions, changes of plan do occur. But the problem is it happens too frequently to what is one of the most critical situations, one of the most critical points in our lives, our self-growth, whether it's personal, professional, or both. We need to respect that time that we have for us. Now, yes, occasionally there are truly going to be emergencies. A last minute shipment needs to go out. Um, There was a, you know, if you work in food service, there was some type of spill or accident that needs to be addressed. If you're in the office and receive that last minute phone call right before five o'clock on Friday that a project has had an accident or that there's a shortage of materials and you could really run down and get, get the supply people to ship that out. Those things do have to happen. We want to make it not on a regular basis that our personal protected time gets interrupted, whether it's a half hour a day, half hour a week, whatever the time is, right, that you can afford, either on the clock at the office for growth and improvement of your job or your personal time, I strongly recommend that you respect it and honor it. Hold yourself accountable to make those appointments. And you can not start off with just blocking out a section of time, like I mentioned on your personal and your work calendar, but even better, put a topic down that you're gonna work on. Is it gonna be listening to a TED talk on you know, YouTube? Is it gonna be reading an online book? Is it gonna be doing research in an area of weakness? Maybe your first meeting with yourself is to identify your strengths and your weakness. Do some type of self-assessment. From there then, Your next meeting would be, I'm going to monitor my strengths, and I'm also going to look at improving my weaknesses. Which one or two will I work on? Which one or two will I focus on? And how will I know that I'm improving? The way you know that you're improving is through metrics. Metrics are quantitative points that can be measured so that you can put numbers to them. Perhaps it would be in percentage. Perhaps it would be in count. Perhaps it would be in throughput. The point being, if you have a particular weakness, there are things that you can do to work on that and improve that. And before you start working on your weakness, document down. If your your challenge is with filler words, record yourself speaking or go back to a presentation you gave and see how many times you use those filler and crutch words that I've mentioned. It might be every couple seconds or several times a minute. Who knows? But the point being, on average, you'll have filler words, for example, that are five or 10 per minute. Once you go through your coaching and once you go through your training, such as using the three P's, the powerfully placed pauses, you can use those pauses instead of filler words. Initially, those pauses, those delays will seem incredibly long, very uncomfortable. But in all reality, they're likely just fractions of a second or a second long. And using that will really help you to focus on removing those filler words in this case. So in closing, I hope that this discussion on knowing your career growth limitations has piqued your interest and made you think about some areas that you would like to work on for growth. If there's something during this episode series that I didn't talk about that you'd be more interested in talking about, please email me directly, craig at craigansell.com, or hit us up on any of our social media at Craig Ansell, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. We're always looking for listener feedback. We would love to hear your comments online, as well as a few likes to let us know we're going in the right direction. As we recap this small series, Knowing Your Career Growth Limitations, we talked about outward communication, which is body language, posture, the confidence which you exude with that, and then your speaking style, your loudness, your tone, your eye contact, followed by listening skills with the concept of two ears and one mouth, listen twice as much as you speak, watch out for pauses and interruptions, And then your deciphering and decoding skills, followed by processing that information, your processing skills, decision-making, which now takes you into action-taking, followed by problem-solving, value addition, don't be a pass-through person, knowing your limitations and knowing when to say when, 
then knowing when to raise your hand for help, followed by selectively using the phrase, I don't know, or I'm not familiar with that. Finally, using the concept and awareness of time to your benefit, not only for your work life, but your personal as well, so that you set some time aside for yourself and you protect and respect that time. I hope this discussion on knowing your career growth limitations helped you. We'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful week ahead. I've been your host, Craig Ansell. Thank you for listening and being a valuable subscriber to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. Don't forget to check out our brand new website, craigansell.com. We've got a lot of great resources up there and free content for you to download. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.